We all need R&R, a little rest, a little recreation. You know, God created the world, and God rested, and the seventh day is supposed to be a time of rest. And we all rest in different ways, some of us by lying down, and some of us by doing a little something different. But rest is essential to human development. And then recreation. All too often, we think recreation is just having a great time, and that's good. But recreation is doing whatever it is that makes you new from the inside out, that makes you come more fully alive. I read this beautiful passage this last week about what happens when people stand to make vows at the altar for richer, for poorer, for better, or for worse. And the author of this little thing wrote, he said, do you realize that when you're doing that, you're giving yourself away, that you're giving yourself to another, and that in giving oneself to the other, you're coming more fully alive to yourself than ever before. And it's that way with love. You can change the category. But whenever we find ourselves in a place where we give ourselves to another, then we find ourselves in ways that we had not known us before. And that's the whole meaning of renewal. We need a little rest, a little recreation, but we also need renewal on the inside and from the inside out. I'm going to tell you, it renews my heart and blesses my heart to see our children perform. Do you know that the caliber and quality of their presentation is unmatched in this city? Things like that don't happen much. And look at them getting up early and coming out here to be in church. And a lot of it's big church stuff, and it's a little boring. But a lot of it's pretty neat, too. And all of it is good for us to be together. You and I need renewal. When we were talking to Taylor right before the baptism, we said what is really the bottom line. And I just asked it to him at the altar. Perhaps you heard it. And this is it. Do you want the Christ outside you to become the Christ inside you? And incidentally, all that means is as much of Christ as you understand to receive as much of Christ as you can. You can't do better, and you can't do more. But that's what new life is about. That's what conversion is about, that point of new beginnings. And then, once we are renewed, once we are refreshed in God, once we are converted, if you like, once we are born again, if you prefer those words, then we are called to become ministers of reconciliation. Let me make that more simple. Once Christ is in our lives, we have to help the world get along. Once Christ is in our lives, we have to get along better with one another, with each other. The recent events in Florida, the killing of that lovely young singer, those people killed one year ago in the church while they were at prayer meeting, You know what they did? They wrote a new narrative of the human condition. Instead of reaching out in anger and ugliness and retribution, they reached out in forgiveness. They reached out in trying to understand. The world and the world in us does not understand that kind of thing. That's the truth. But it's also equally true that that is a stronger and more powerful weapon than the weapons of war and destruction. Because to be a reconciling person in a world like ours is to create the only hope that the human family has. Somebody has to be kind. Somebody has to be compassionate. Somebody has to be forgiving, as we have been forgiven. Don't know about you, but I'm sure thankful that God is a forgiving God. I'm sure thankful that God is a God of new beginnings. Last week, I ran into a young kid that had been in in treatment three times. And he was talking to his counselor, and he said to the counselor, he said, I get out of treatment, I start a life of new beginnings, and I'm back on the street in no time flat. And the counselor knew what he meant. How many times is God going to give me a new beginning, he asked. And the counselor said, until you stay off the street. Are you with me? We are new for a purpose and for a reason. And because it's a full day, I'm going to make this very brief, just a couple more minutes. But I think this will relate to our wonderful young people as well as to we grown-up people. Her name was Sarah, and she was very much into herself. Sarah's about 11 years old. 
And the other kids try to make friends with Sarah, but she always puts them off. One of the little girls came up and said, I see you doing a crossword puzzle. Can I do that with you? No. This is my puzzle. I don't want to do it with anybody else. And so one of the days, when they were all playing volleyball, one of the boys came up and said, Sarah, we're having fun. Don't you want to play with us? And Sarah said, no, I'm doing my own thing. Don't bother me. I don't want to get hot. I don't want to get sweaty. And so after the kids tried a lot of times, they said, well, we'll just sort of let her to herself. I guess that's what she wants. And so one day the teacher surprised the class. She brought them some giant, huge cookies, chocolate chip cookies. And they liked chocolate chip cookies. And when Sarah got her cookie, she opened it up, she took the little paper off of it, and it fell on the floor, and it broke into little pieces. And everybody looked at her, but nobody did anything except one boy named Lewis. Lewis got up, and he came over to her, and he didn't say a word. He just picked up the broken parts of the cookie on the floor, and he wrapped them in the paper, and he put the paper in his pocket. And then he took his cookie out, and he broke it in half, and he gave it to her. And she said, but that's your cookie. Why would you give that to me? He said, because I believe that caring is sharing. And if I care, I share. And she said, I can't take this cookie. And he said, why not? And she said, because I've been mean. Because I've been selfish. Because I've been all about me. And he said, go ahead and take the cookie. Maybe it'll help. And so she did. Later that day, Mr. Reed, the principal, came to Lewis and said, Lewis, I was watching today between you and Sarah. He said, you know, we've been concerned about Sarah. She's being raised by a grandmother. She's had a lot of problems, a lot of happy, a lot of unhappy days. And she said, he said, we saw what you did today. And he said, I really think that was nice. And I really think that would make a difference. Why did you do that? And he said, I did that because I believe that caring is sharing. The principal said, do you think she'll begin to care today? And Lewis said, I really hope so. I believe that the Holy Spirit of the living God, present in this church today, right here and right now, is saying to you and to me, be renewed in spirit and in truth and become a minister of reconciliation, writing the new narrative of kindness, compassionate, forgiving love. And before the world is done, you will win the victory. It will take time. There will be losses, but before it's over and done you'll win. That's the good news of the gospel of Christ. Amen.